Hey guys, Watson here. So during my whole Splatoon career, I've been asked countless of times how to get good in this game, what to do to become successful and what it takes to achieve your goals in this game. I myself, with the teams I've played for, have won the most prestigious western tournaments and leagues like the Squidboard, Splat Series and Looting. We attended invitational Japanese tourneys where we came close to win against the top of the top in Japan. I've even become European champion in Switzerland and represented Europe at the World Championship in Los Angeles, where we finished as a close second place right behind Japan. So I basically traveled the world to play Splatoon. It's safe to say that I climbed the ranks in this game and been through most of the points that I want to talk about and share with you guys today myself. Of course, there's not going to be a straight plan to follow which leads to guaranteed success, but if you really desire to become better at this game or even want to be a competitive player, I advise you to take the following points seriously. So without further ado, let's get started. By playing, I mean playing. A lot. Right away, the first point sounds like the most casual one, but trust me, it's true. The most successful Splatoon 2 players have spent a tremendous amount of time with the game. In life in general, if you want to become good at something, you gotta invest as much time into it as you possibly can. In Splatoon, that's of course playing the game. It's a matter of learning. The more time you spend playing the core game, the more unique situations you will come across and learn how to handle them successfully. Being more experienced in the most situations as possible will give you the edge over most of your opponents. But don't just hop into the game and play mindlessly, which brings us to my second point. It doesn't only matter how much you play the game, but how you play the game. Your goal should be to train as effectively as possible. Someone with 1000 hours of well spent training can be a far scarier opponent than someone with 2000 hours of not focused and intense training. Want to train certain techniques like substrating? Go to the training room for 2 hours solely practicing it. You have troubles on specific maps? Wait for it to come up in rotation and play every rotation with it. Want to improve 1v1s? A quick sum, quick respawn and take every 1v1 in a match regardless of your results. I see a lot of people complaining about solo queue not being competitive enough and the lack of possibilities to practice properly. I think that's wrong. It's up to you what you do with the cards you're dealt with. I myself have always created small challenges if I wanted to improve certain aspects of my gameplay. Having troubles to consistently hit you two shots with your slosher? Challenge yourself to have only two shots for each opponent. And if you miss once, you give up the engagement. Having troubles dying too much? Challenge yourself to not die at all in a match, to see how far you can go with your weapon without putting yourself in danger. If you die, give up the match. It sounds harsh at first, but that's how you learn properly and spend your practice time efficiently. But what to focus on while practicing? That's the most important advice I can give you. By rewatching your gameplay, you will notice habits in your gameplay you've never even thought about. See what works and what doesn't. If something didn't work, ask yourself why. If you die, ask yourself how you could have avoided it. Notice any bad habits? Try to raise them in the next training session. Just look at that clip of me here. What could I have done to prevent that such a bad outcome for me? If I wouldn't put myself into such a bad position, I wouldn't be in trouble in first place. So I conclude I have to practice my positioning. Watching your own mistakes is the best way to improve in my opinion. Trust me, you will see your very own gameplay with whole different eyes. Even if you don't have or can't afford a capture card. Just get your next nearby camera, or simply use your phone to record your gameplay. Don't hesitate to show your gameplay to others as well, they might notice some additional flaws. But don't stop at solely watching your own gameplay. <coughs> Through watching other people's gameplay, you might find strategies you would never come up with on your own. Try to copy successful habits, or avoid bad habits you see others do. You also get an overall better understanding of the game watching other people's play. Especially when learning a new weapon, you want to watch good players playing it to see how it's meant to play. You're going to save a lot of time not having to figure out a weapon completely on your own, which can be spent on practicing other stuff. YouTube and Twitch are the primary sources of top level Splatoon gameplay in the western scene. I've linked my Twitch and other top players Twitch and YouTube accounts in the description below for you guys to check out. Moving on to the next point. I'm completely serious about this. Getting bodied is the best thing that can happen to you. It shows you your gravest mistakes and what you have to work on in the best way possible. You will improve from losing, not from winning. In life in general, failure is the best teacher, so don't be afraid of getting your ass kicked. 
Getting bodied means you played against an opponent far more experienced than you, and that's exactly what you want. Always seek challenge, that's how you improve. Always try to play against the best opponents possible. If you develop a mindset in which you see failure as a room to improve rather than a disappointing experience, you won't feel losing anymore. And if someone is playing like he has nothing to lose, he will be more likely to take the right risks. And he doesn't fear any opponent anymore. If you're struggling and on a heavy losing streak though, Every once in a while, you will come across obstacles which are seemingly impossible to overcome. You will have significant losing streaks and not everything will work out how you would like it to be. Trust me, this occurs more often than you would like it to. If you're now thinking, oh well, where have I heard this one before? Yes, I'm going to tell you the same as everyone else does. Don't give up. Being persistent is most likely the most valuable trait you can have. You can have all the talent in the world if you don't work hard enough and can't overcome setbacks, you will never make it far. Let me tell you, if you're willed to become better at this game, you will most likely overplay yourself at some point. From my experience, just taking a day off to refresh your mind can cause miracles. And if you're struggling too much, taking a break of several weeks is also something you should consider. I've did that in the past and it really helped me. Just make sure that you're persistent enough to come back after you've been struggling. After you come back, you will always be stronger than you were before. Like I already mentioned in the previous point, we learn through failure. If you know how to handle failure, you're going to have a significant advantage. With this mindset and enough time in your hand, your path is set for the top. Since the last two points could be applied to life in general, let me give you some Splatoon related basic gameplay tips. First, find a playstyle and a weapon class you feel comfortable with. While there are people in the game who can seemingly play everything they touch, it's better to concentrate your resources on one weapon class, like shooter or blaster, slusher or backliner, and so on, and adjust your playstyle accordingly, with being offensive, defensive, or more of a mix between. It will make it easier to pick up other weapons in the same weapon class since you already know the basics. Secondly, Know your weapon advantages. Try to see what makes your weapon special. What can it do what not everyone else can? For example, me playing Slusher here. This weapon can slush over stuff and its whole slushing hitbox functions as a single fall off projectile. If I position myself in spots where I can only get hit by fall off shots, like this ramp for example, I can have an advantage in this spot since I can simply slush over to the other side and still easily hit them because of my huge fall off projectile hitbox. Thirdly, know your weapon weaknesses. Try to find ways to overcome them and play around them. Next, always try to stay calm and don't stress yourself. If you start panicking in in-game situations, your fate is already decided. Also, always try to have a game plan and do something. There's nothing worse than not doing anything. If you struggle to know what you should do in neutral situations, you just try to space with bombs, maybe paint or shark people. Yes, waiting is also something you can do if you have a plan for it to follow up, like shocking. Just don't stand in the middle of the match waiting for the opponents to push back in. <clears throat> and last but not least, the most important gameplay tip I can give you, don't die. It sounds simple, but it's truly the best thing you can do. If you die, you have no presence on the field anymore, and you put your own fate into other hands. Many people underestimate the importance of not dying in this game. Talking about the game with other people who share the same ambitions and goals will always give you new perspectives and will expand your understanding of the game. Socializing and networking is always required to find the best training partners later on and having a network of people who also push the game to its limits really benefits you in many ways. So don't be afraid to reach out to people and start getting into discussions. The more you talk about the game, the better. And let's be honest here, playing together with a group of people is always better than playing alone. Speaking of playing together... Of course, since Splatoon is a team game of four, you're required to get into a team to make it far. Your first priority while looking for a team should be people who share the same goals and have the right ambitions. Finding a team can be the hardest task on my list. There are plenty of servers though dedicated to finding teams, socializing with other competitive players or for newcomers trying to find their footings in the scene. I will link these servers in the description below as well. 
Don't just expect to get onto a good team right away. This is not how the world works. You still gotta work hard to make a name for yourself. If there are no good team opportunities at the moment, don't hesitate to take your fate in your own hand and create your very own team. This way you can be 100% sure that your team has the same goals as you. It's the most reliable way, but also the way you have to work most for. I myself, after being on two different teams, realized that I need to create my own team to achieve the goals I had with this community. And after months of hard and dedicated work, it finally started to pay off. All the practice and improvement tips mentioned in the previous points also apply to getting better with a team as well. Let me give you some additional tips though. Try to have open and honest dealings with each other, enabling you to address difficult topics and criticize teammates, which is required to get better. Try to avoid toxic behavior and call out people who start to get mad playing the game. Try to have video analyses of your whole team playing to break down what's going wrong so you know what to focus on while training. Also, don't hesitate to come together to go over strats and maps in private rooms to enhance your play. Speaking of team sizes, I would recommend a team of 5 members. You could say 4 members would be ideal since the less members the better people know how to play with each other since they play with the same people over and over again. But from experience, even the most active teams can't compete on a regular basis with only 4 players. Thus I advise teams of 5 to have more players available to be more active overall. You could also increase your team's size to 6 or maybe 7 players, but the more players, the more difficult it gets to get used to each other and your team requires way more strategies for all the different players coming together. And this brings me to my last point. Over the last few years playing Splatoon competitively, I've encountered countless of people complaining about everything you can imagine. Let me get this straight, everyone is dealt with the same cards. The ones being successful were those who decided to put in hard work to overcome the obstacles others chose to complain about. I've seen people complaining about top players having it easy and such, but trust me, every player on the top put in a shit ton of work to get where he is. Good things come to those who work hard. You come across a weapon which destroys you easily? Don't choose the easy way and complain. Try to adapt and find counters to it. There's a map you do horribly on because it plays completely different than all the other maps in the game? Accept it and adjust your strategy or playstyle, which might have worked on other maps, to gain an advantage on the map you're currently struggling on. You don't like the current meta? Find out what works against it. You don't necessarily have to copy every walking strategy. The so-called meta is solely a perception of the community what should work best at the moment. It tells you what you can expect to go up against in most of the matches, so if you find valid counters to it, you're not even forced to play the meta. This sums up my 10 points I recommend to become better in Splatoon. I wanted to squeeze as much tips and information in one video as possible. My goal was to make it easier for players to break into the top level of the game, so our flourishing community can thrive even more. I'm hoping having more good players overall and at the top level of the community will increase competition resulting in a higher average skill level in the western scene. It's also the first time I'm doing such a guide, and also my first talking video I've spent several days working on, so any feedback is welcome. If you liked the video, leave a like, comment and subscribe for more guides and competitive gameplay in the future. With that being said, have a good one, see you around guys, Watson out.